Hold on, hold on, hold on. What? He hid what? Where? Why didn't he just give it back? Damn, so he told him he had it. How'd they get it out? They, they did what? They went up in there. Oh, man, they're thugging for real. That's disgusting. Like, out of all the places, he could have hid it in the mattress. He could have had somebody else hold it. But instead, he stuck it in his... Oh, my God. Now, you got to be the stupidest motherfucker. Man, you already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, and We're back. Sorry for the hiatus. Sometimes you just have stuff to do, and I've had stuff to do. We had a loss in the family. My wife's mom passed. That has been unreal, man. I'm not going to get much into it. I just want to say rest in peace, Mama Ruth, and that my heart aches, hurts, and goes out to everybody that was affected. By her loss. So we've had a lot going on and we have done a lot as of late. I'm trying to think what all has happened. So much has happened. It's kind of it's kind of hard to keep track of. Let's just say it's been a busy, busy, super busy two weeks. What you don't see on camera is a whole lot of extra stuff going on. With the transition to Rumble, I'm still trying to, to figure Rumble out. The issue I've had with Rumble... And y'all got to bear with me. Whenever we go and we have a break period where we don't post, we got to catch y'all up to date. The transition to Rumble is cool. And when I say transition, like we ain't going nowhere. YouTube is my home. I love YouTube. YouTube is my bread and butter. YouTube has been great to me. Take these off. So like I was saying, <laughs> I post to Rumble and then somehow it reposts to YouTube. Go do your research. Go Google it. You're not supposed to be able to upload the same video twice to YouTube. It has a URL, kind of like a social security number, uh, item number. That's what a URL is. Every video is specific. It's got its own, you know, URL. But when I upload to Rumble, that creates, I guess, a new URL. And then it kicks it back to YouTube. So I can't be uploading content to Rumble that is then going to kick back to YouTube. I, I don't even understand how this is working. So once I figure out that glitch, then the videos I've got for Rumble will go on Rumble because I can't have them go on Rumble and then they post them to YouTube and then get me strikes and demonetized and all that bad stuff. That's the point in doing the Rumble stuff so I can speak the way I without having to worry about all that. But I can't because I'm demonetized because I Rumble. I put it back on YouTube. I got this new series I'm working on, right? Called My Worst Enemy. With skit style. Loosely based on facts and reality. Where we go over different scenarios and things I've dealt with in life. And it's kind of like that voice inside of your head. Talking to you. Yesterday I did a short. And that would be the introduction. The whole hey, being isolation and going crazy video. I heard you. To me, it was kind of, it was kind of artistic. I enjoyed doing it, but I'm gonna be doing a bunch of those. It's gonna be a new series, where it's um, I'm in a situation, and then uh, the voice pops up, takes control. Now I'm debating on trying to, if I'm, I'm debating on whether I'm gonna introduce a second voice, which is like the good side, or if I'm just gonna keep that that dark voice talking to me. Because if we want to be real, I never really had a voice of reason, which I guess would be the little, the good side, the angel on the shoulder. I never really had that, that voice of reason. I just had that, do it, do it, do it. So I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be real fun. Let's get into the purpose of today's video. Getting robbed. Fights in prison, fights in jail. I know guys that did their entire bid. Without a single fight. See my rock eyebrow? Without a single fight. It's doable. I know guys that did it. Very, very humble men. Turn the other cheek kind of men. You got that kind of men. 
Some of these guys were, were scared, and some of them were very disciplined. Don't confuse scared and disciplined. Some of them were, were scared of others, and some of them were scared of themselves. So they had to suck it up. You got it. Tell the next man you got it. Let him walk on his way, feeling like he did something. Feeling like King Kong, like he just like he just chumped this dude, not knowing this man sent him on his way because he was about to tear his head off. We can get into some of the robberies today. One of the more petty robberies I've seen with a really nasty twist to it. And what it was over was petty. P-E-T-T-Y. Petty. But most times it is. A lot of times it's not about what the come up is. A lot of times it's about a message. It's about the principle. It's just a display of power, especially with the gangs. And a lot of my stories involve gangs. Today's story's got gangs in it. Getting robbed, getting beat up. Hmm. Trying to be slick. Hmm. Should have just gave it back. Hmm. It wasn't yours. You saw a quick come up, thought you was going to be smart in the ordeal and come out on top. Yeah. And you got popped. And then they found what you had to hide. <laughs> With all that being said, man, you know how to see me. You know I done lived it. So, let's relive it. Now, robbery in prison is already a very common thing. Extortion, thievery, sneaking around, guys taking stuff by any means necessary. Very common. 2010 Virginia Department of Corrections makes the great decision to stop smoking. So overnight, it went from, you could go to commissary, purchase this stuff, black and mild cigarettes, chewing tobacco, dip, rolling papers, lighters, ashtrays, rolling machines, single ounces, six ounce bags. Like, if you had the money for it, prison sold it. You could wake up in the morning, have a cup of coffee, and if you smoke, light a cigarette up, or light your black up. Tobacco was a big, big thing in prison. But like I said, overnight it went from, you could buy it from the prison to it being one of the biggest sellers on the black market. Now we talked amongst ourselves as convicts and inmates, there's a difference. Ain't no way. We ain't about to let them, they're not gonna stop selling tobacco. We will burn this bit to the ground. That's what everybody said, right? They stopped selling tobacco. There was a little kickback. Little spark-offs here and there. But did we burn the prison to the ground? No. Did we riot? No. Did we shut it down? Like they do in the movies? Throwing people over the top tier? Tossing burning mattresses? You know. No. What did we do? We turned on each other. What did we do? We started robbing each other. That period right there, I saw more robberies, I would say, in the year that follows them taking tobacco out of prison than I did my entire span of incarceration. I'm talking all my years combined from, from juvenile all the way up until 2010. In that year that followed tobacco being taken out of DOC, robberies became an everyday thing, sometimes multiple times a day. Guys were almost like like they were on the hunt. Like they could smell it in the air. And depending on where it was coming from, the wolves were coming. And that's what it was like. It was like wild animals smelling blood. Somebody would light a cigarette up in their cell or roll up or the smallest amount of tobacco and they would blow it and other guys would be at the door. They'd be trying to figure out where it's coming from, plying planning, scheming. And then it wouldn't take long. The doors would pop and the guys would go in the direction of the smoke. Now, once they took smoking out of prison, you could smell it. You ever been in an environment where there's no smoking and then somebody walks in, they just smoked a cigarette? Oh, it stinks. You could smell it. Or you ever walked into a room where somebody was just smoking and you just came from a room where nobody was? You can smell it. So no matter what you do, we would fluff the baby powder in the air, cologne, 
incense, all these different things to try to mask the smell, scrub the walls, clean the solution on the walls, all the tricks. You can smell it. And I've seen it time and time again. I would smell it and I would already know. It's going to be boop, pop, boop, pop, boop, pop once these doors open. Guys will try to get slick and blow it in the vent. <laughs> that vent feeds three other cells. So as you're blowing it in your vent, it's coming out of their vents. So now the three cells around you, one beside you and two above you, they automatically know one of the three cells that's attached to my vent line is smoking. Seen dudes get hurt real, real bad. Now today's story is not behind tobacco. It's behind a lighter. Now you don't understand the importance of a lighter until you've been in that type of situation. Where well, you've got stuff to smoke, but you ain't got no fire. Now you can pop the socket. Pop in the socket, it consists of putting two pieces of something. It can be lead from a pencil, it can be metal, it can be paper clips, it can be staples. It can be a lot of different things. It can be the aluminum foil off of an orange juice. Put two in there. Then you take another piece of metal and a Q-tip and you touch the, that piece of metal to those two, which causes an arc. Poof, and then it lights the Q-tip on fire. And then you go to somebody who's got a light and you get a wick. Take a piece of toilet paper and you twist it long ways till it almost looks like a mop string. And you light the end on fire and you blow it out. Now that thing will continue to burn. You just don't have a flame. It's got a cherry. Then you would hang that through the vents at the side of your toilet, and the toilet would suck the smoke in, and you wouldn't smell it. But who wants a long-ass piece of toilet paper rolled up all super tight, hanging out the side of the toilet when you can just pull out a lighter? A lighter stayed around for a very long time. They had dogs that would come in and would hit and look and search for tobacco. They had trained them to search for tobacco, just like they had for anything else that was illegal. But they couldn't smell a lighter. And guys got real creative in hiding the lighters. Guys maxed out on lighters months in advance. Had other guys buying lighters for them. And these aren't big. These are the cheap, you know, the crackhead lighters that you can super flame. <laughs> turn all the way up type lighters. But guys stocked up on them. They started to run out fast. I've talked about this dude in the past, Gizmo. Gizmo Selly Terry goes home. Now, Terry has agreed to sell this lighter to the Bloods. The Bloods have given him tobacco for it in exchange for the lighter. Before he was going in that night, he was supposed to give the lighter up. The guards come in, they yell, lock down. You got a couple minutes to scraggle around, get you some hot water, you know, do whatever you're going to do. Finish up your phone call. They usually call 10, 20 minutes to lockdown. He plays sleep. Goes in the cell about 30 minutes prior to lockdown, plays sleep. They sim on the younger Bloods down there. Hey, yo. Gizmo tells him, hey, he's sleep, he's sleep, he's sleep. Hey, we got to get the light off of him. I'm going to grab it from him. Don't worry about it. He's sleep, he's sleep. I got you. So they allowed him to lock down. This is mistake number one. A lot of this stuff could be prevented. Mistake number one. They should have never allowed him to lock down, knowing that he would be leaving at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, without getting what was theirs. They paid for it. Prior to locking in that cell tonight, knowing that the next time his door opens is when everybody's going to be asleep. He's going to walk across the pub with his bags and out that door. They allowed him to lock in without getting what was theirs. I don't know if the big homie was under the impression the youngin got it or the youngin really just expected Gizmo to give it to him in the morning. Whatever the case was. The first thing in the morning, I told y'all Gizmo lived in the cell next to me, him and Terry. And then I had Ace in the cell next to me was Gizmo Selly after that. That young dude the following morning goes to the cell. Terry's gone home. Hey, Gizmo, let me get that uh, the lighter up off of you. And Gizmo starts with the larceny. And at first, I'm going to be real. I thought Gizmo was telling the truth. Terry ain't leave me the lighter. What you mean, Terry ain't leave the lighter? Hey, yo, the homies in there paid for the lighter. We need the lighter. This is a lighter, a 99-cent lighter. To us, it's, it's nothing. You know, it's just, it's a lighter. But to somebody in there, it's a big deal. If somebody needs a light, whatever they got to light, you tell them, bring it down here, let me hit it. That's how you get in. That's how you get in the whip. That's how you get on. Bring it to me. Like you can't just use my lighter, but you let me hit it and I'll light it for you. It's a good side hustle. It's a good way to, to get your extra puffs in if you ain't have it like that. Even if you did have it like that, you need me. I got the lighter. You can't do nothing without that. You know, you might go ahead and pop that socket, but you also might 
kick the breaker and have everybody around you ready to beat you up because you done knocked the power out of themselves. Happens all the time. Gizmo tells them, Terry didn't leave me the lighter. <laughs> hey, yo, stop playing, man. Don't play with me. Let me get the lighter, man. Yo, I'm being dead serious, man. Terry ain't leaving me the lighter. I'm standing in my doorway. I already knew this was going to happen. I knew when Terry played sleep that Terry had done something large in his style. You ain't got the lighter? Terry didn't leave me the lighter. Who'd he give it to? I don't know, man. He got up in the middle of the night and I told him, hey, dude came to the cell for the lighter and Terry told me, oh, that's already gone. This is what Gizmo's saying in the doorway, right? So dude grabs Gizmo. Gizmo's not the type that's going to do a whole lot of fighting. He's not no real competition. When you think of prison, he's not what you think as far as inmates go. And I've told you before, it don't matter if you're seven foot tall or, or five foot tall, when they lock you up, you're going to prison. You don't get to say, I'm soft, I don't want to go. It don't happen that way. Dude grabs, gives him over, give me the lighter, man. I ain't got the lighter, I ain't got the lighter, I ain't got the lighter, right? And Gizmo was a heavy, heavy smoker. Gizmo's fingers were brown. You've been locked up, seen somebody that smoked something all the way down to where it burns their lips and they get the brown spot on their lips and their fingertips turn brown or black. Gizmo's fingers stayed black because he would smoke it until it would swallow the fire on you type smoking, right? Dude rough Gizmo up, slams him all up against the door frame, slams him inside the cell, give me the lighter. Goes in there, hit, tags him up a couple of times, you hear the pop, 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 uh, uh, uh. I ain't got it, I ain't got it, I ain't got it. Now dude's got to go tell the big homie he didn't get the lighter last night. He's going to feel the type of way. So you let the man leave without getting it, I don't care if he was asleep. He goes and tells the big homie, that's pretty much exactly what he told him. What you mean you didn't get the lighter last night? Why you ain't tell me this last night? And I'd have went down there and got him up out the bed. Man, Gizmo saying Terry ain't giving the lighter. Who got the lighter? Gizmo saying he ain't got it. Now they mob up. They keep calls out. Different dudes go up to the big homie's cell. They have a little meeting real quick. Go get the lighter. They go down there and now Gizmo's walking around in the pod. He's not in the cell. And they're calling him over to the cell. Hey, Gizmo, come here. And they go up in Gizmo's cell. Gizmo's not going over there. He ain't stupid. They go in there and they commence to flip in the cell. Trash in the cell. Dude pokes his head out. Hey, where's the lighter at? Man, I, I ain't got the lighter. So now they're just going to rob Gizmo. So they start taking Gizmo's stuff. Take his sheet. Sit all his stuff, his commissary, his other stuff. Start stacking all his stuff on it. Tie it up. Over the shoulder like, like Tom Sawyer. Now the cell, they go with it. Dudes are still in there flipping the cell. Flip the mattress off the bed. Dumping out his envelopes. They're going through everything. They have tore this man's cell up looking for this lighter. They still can't get Gizmo to go to the cell. Now, they can't go attack Gizmo because that guard in the booth will see what they're doing. But the way the cell is positioned, I've told you, I was all the way in the back underneath the staircase. He's directly underneath the staircase, and my cell is right to the left of that cell. Gizmo's still saying, I ain't got the lighter. I ain't got it. Petrified, scared to death. They done robbed him, took everything, and he still won't go over there to that cell. Now, at this point in time, I'm in the cell with a blood. I can't remember if dude was nine tray or if he was bounty hunter. Anyways, I'm in the cell with a blood. Gizmo avoids going to that cell the entire day. He would just stay up front, sit at the table. He made sure he stayed with them officers. They done taken everything out of his cell, but what they haven't done is searched him. They haven't went in his pockets. They haven't padded him down, took his shoes off, and that's very common. That's what's coming next. Next is once they get him in that cell, they're going to ride down on him, strip him down naked, and take everything off of him to make sure he's not concealing it. And outside of it being in his pockets, in his sock, somewhere hidden on him, now common sense would tell you to pass it off to a homeboy, but everything ain't for everybody. And passing it off, you now bring somebody else into it. And with the Bloods having the highest amount of numbers, they're not an organization that you want to accept that lighter because you've now taken on that beef. You know this belongs to them. You know he's got the lighter. He ain't supposed to have the lighter. But Gizmo still proclaims he ain't got the lighter. Dudes try to trick him. They're going to beat him up. Just go to the cell, man. Just come to the cell and talk to me, man. I'm not going to put my hands on you. We just got to figure out if you ain't got the lighter, who Terry gave the lighter to. I don't know who he gave the lighter to, man. When he went to leave this morning, I asked him, hey, they came by the cell for the lighter, and he said, oh, that's gone already. I don't know. He won't go to the cell. Lockdown, lockdown for count. Lunchtime count. Gizmo goes in the cell. I told you on my cell many times a game, man. They tell my cellie, as soon as the door is open, you run up in that cell. Keep him in there until we get there. Keep your nose open. See if you smell anything. But don't let him get out that cell. 
When they say count is clear, when count clears, you can push a button and your door open. You better be pushing that button. And you better get to his doorway. There's only eight feet separating myself from his. You better make sure you get to his door before he can get out and push him in and keep him in there until we get down there. Count is now clear at 12.30. My celly runs over there. Gizmo's pushed the button. Gizmo's trying to get out and he's got the door blocked. You ain't going nowhere. Where you going, homeboy? Push his way up in there. Now the big homie's a big dude from North Virginia. Makes his way down the staircase. He ain't in no rush. And Sally's already got Gizmo in there pressed up against the wall. Done put the hands on him several times. Dinged him all up in his face. Done ran his pockets. Patted him down while he's holding him. Robbing him. Checking him. But is it robbery because it belongs to somebody else? But in the eyes of the law, there's robbery. Big homie nonchalantly makes his way down there. Stops and talks to this person. Hey, yo, what up, dude? Talks to that person. And eventually goes over the cell. Tells the youngin, go on, I got it. Tells Gizmo, sit on the bed. Still standing in the doorway of my cell. Spent a lot of time in the doorway of my cell. You just stand and observe. You hear a lot, you see a lot, you learn a lot. A quiet man can learn a whole lot. And I hear him next door. I can hear bits and pieces of what he's saying. But what I'm getting from it is, he's real calm. And Gizmo still proclaims, I ain't got it. I ain't got it, I ain't got it. I hear him hit Gizmo, and I hear Gizmo hit the ground. Now, I don't know what's happening in the cell, but from the noises, the thing about prison is you become real keen on noises because there's a lot you can't see. So other senses kind of heighten. Your sense of smell, your hearing, your third eye, like everything, it heightens to make up for the lack of vision, but not being able to see things. So you start to pick up on certain noises and as I'm standing at my door, I can hear Gizmo gurgling. Dude is choking him. I choke you to death. Where the light at? I choke you to death. Where the light at? Gizmo still, I, 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 I ain't got, I, I, I ain't got. And this dude is choking Gizmo to the point Gizmo's about to go out. And Gizmo tells him, it's in my ass. What did you say? It's in my ass. Get it out. I don't know if I get, get it out. This dude stands in the cells. Gizmo's digging. I can't get it, I can't get it. Get it out. I guess Gizmo goes over the toilet and he's doing whatever he can trying to get it out. And then I hear him hit the ground again, boom. I hear a little bit of scuffling. I hear Gizmo, ah, 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 ah. Dude went up in there and got it. But that wasn't that vicious. I would seen much more vicious means of getting things out. He gets it out. Gizmo's got it up in there, tied up in the finger of a glove and Tied up in another finger of a glove. I hear the water come on next door, which means he's rinsing it off. I hear him hit Gizmo a couple more times. He comes out, calls out to his homies. They go to the cell, at which point he kind of tells them, it's how you get things done. Sends them back down there to beat Gizmo some more. They go down there, trash Gizmo. In the following weeks, the commissary, probably the next month or so, I'd say, three, four, yeah, about the next month or so, they rob Gizmo every single story just for what he did on GP. Even though they got back what was theirs on the fact that you tried to run game, tried to run game, or like you tried to run game, or we're going to come for what's ours, or we're going to keep coming until we feel the debt's been paid. That night that Terry left, Terry did leave the lighter for Gizmo. Terry really was asleep. Gizmo ran the okie doke. There was no funny business with Terry acting like he was asleep. Terry was asleep. Terry was going home the next day. He had to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Had been locked up a very long time. Going to sleep early was routine for him. It was just another day. He went to bed. Left the light on the counter. Gizmo. Make sure it gets this. I got you. Terry leaves. Gizmo. Bags the lighter up. Puts it in two gloves. And steals it. Whoa, vicious, vicious ass whooping behind that lighter. He would take them periodically. Dudes would go down there and go to rob him, and he wouldn't just, he wasn't no just, I'm gonna give it up. He would try to defend himself. Come on, man, don't take my bag. Boom, they punch him in his face, and take the bag from him. I leave it to commissary, and I watch it time and time again. My cellmate, several different times, they, they go over there and check, see if he's got a thing to sell a value. It's kind of to send a message to everybody else you don't play with us. We'll come, and we'll come, and we'll come again and again and again if you even try to do anything. My cell would eventually get jammed up on a stabbing charge on the yard and shipped to Red Onion. And I got to make this clear, right? We're not like the West Coast out here. 
when it comes to sticking things like that, like, it's not something we do. I ain't never, ever suitcased anything in my life. I've never put nothing in my man purse, in my man buns, in my man wallet, in my prison pocket. Ain't nothing ever been in there. Nothing. Nothing. Thing that stuff comes out, but ain't nothing never been in there. We don't do that. It's not an East Coast thing. If you do stuff like that, people gonna look at you funny. I'm like, you did what? He stuck what in his what? Like, they're thinking if you'll just voluntarily shove stuff in there, then you'll take some other things in there. Putting stuff like that, doing stuff like that, to a lot of guys, is an invitation to an area you don't want invitation to. It brings awareness to the fact that, uh, huh, you'll let something slide, you'll let something ride, possibly slip, slide, and glide, like, blocker, 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 like you'll, nah. We don't do that. Are there guys that have done it? Yeah, I've seen a lot of guys do it, but it's not common. Those are desperate measures. If I've got to get caught with it, or it's got to go there, I'm going to get caught with it. I'm just going to be real with you. They're going to catch me with it. I'm not putting nothing in nothing. Now, I'm not nothing against anybody that has to do it. Every state is different. West is different. East is different. Midwest. Every region is different on how we do things. Like I said, we just don't do that. We associate guys that do that with guys that do that. And that's that's not cool. Gizmo got out. Crazy thing is, I would come to find out that Gizmo actually used to live in my mom's neighborhood. And I also found out after getting out that Gizmo was no good. I didn't find that out until actually about six months ago. But Gizmo had some very, very, very Bad charges. Charges that involved a, a child. I won't lie, man. At the time that Gizmo was going through all that, he wasn't he wasn't like me. He wasn't like guys like me. He wasn't like a lot of different guys. He wasn't a fighter. He wasn't the type that was going to square up. Like, if you choke Gizmo, chances are his arms are just going to go limp and he was going to come on and just get all choked up. So I did kind of feel some type of, like, bad for Gizmo hearing him get beat up, watching him get robbed. But recently I found out about Gizmo's charges and they should have done so much worse to him. When he got that lighter out, he should have, you know what, I ain't gonna say. All behind a lighter, a lighter. Stay out of prison, people. Stay out of prison. Be able to go to the store. Be able to smoke if you want. I told you, the greatest gift in this life next to life is options. The fact that you have options to do different things. It's the small things. It's what you're going to miss most. Aside from like your family and your loved ones, you don't realize how much the little things mean until they're gone. Refrigerators, microwaves, your car, your car keys, being able to use a kitchen knife. These are all options, luxuries that you have out here. Things that you will not see anymore once you get locked up. Stay free, people. Find another way. Remove yourself from, from people that allow you to do stupid things or don't have your best interest at heart. And as for you, Gizmo, if you should ever see this, you deserved a thousand times worse than what you got. What you did was grimy. What you did that put you in prison was despicable. You should have ended up with dog, jingling, treetop. Should have got way more than what them, them bloods gave you. And you should have had way more up in your, than just the lighter. Just my opinion, hey, what do I know? But anyways, these jails, these penitentiaries, these prisons, these thieves. Oh, just crazy world. It's out of an already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. Just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones, and there are some real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. Man, y'all know how we do. Salute.